Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord is worthy to be praised. Go ahead and have your seats. Giving honor to God. Hallelujah. Can you keep on playing for me? You just sound good. Praise the Lord. No, I'm good. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Giving honor to God who is yet and still becoming the head of my life. Keep on finding situations where I realize he's not the head. Keep on running into situations where God says, you haven't given that to me yet keep on running into situations we go talk about kingdom today but that cold-blooded statement that that the disciples um uh they changed the world when they asked jesus um teach us to pray cold-blooded because they did not know how to reach god and they said jesus you got access to him so teach us how to pray and jesus starts praying and he says our father let's come together who art in heaven hallowed be thy name and then he cut everybody's throat and he said thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and has anybody do, do y'all all remember that movie independence day with will smith when the first one came out even the second one um, do you remember when the alien ship came down and, and was hovering over the city? Think about that as God's kingdom. Can you imagine if that kingdom landed on earth? It would, it would completely destroy everything around it because it was so huge and it was literally out of this world. And when God's kingdom invades your life, it's so big it's so much that it will completely overtake your life so today I'm not playing I feel a prophetic mandate today and I'm going to give you the title now you can have church or you can have power that's what we're talking about today you can have church or you can have power giving honor to God who's becoming the head of my life to Pastor Shante Cephas my big brother my psychologist um, he's a friend that comes out of nowhere like, you'll be alright out of the weirdest places he has some of the weirdest revelations he talks from a very earthly place where you can get it and I need it so you're everything to me praise the Lord for you sir in front of my parents are here I I sent them word I didn't really think they were gonna show up because they because pro <laughs> prophetess uh, Kay she had to preach in Bakersfield yesterday and I was like there is no way that her and Apostle were going to show up today. So I was pretty stunned. I was like, oh man, really? So giving honor to y'all in your respective places. I'm calling titles today because I honor titles. So Apostle Ray, bless you, sir. Glad to see you. My prophetic school is here. Some people from my prophetic academy are here. And I give um, y'all honor. Hallelujah. Bless you, Darcel and Gigi. Mama, hi. Rose, right? Rose and Sharon, God bless you. Earlene, hi. I just want to say hi to everybody before I get out of the way. Hi, y'all. What's up, y'all? I'm trying to be like really nice about it because uh, this word ain't cute. So um, I'm trying to be really nice. Um, so do me a favor, just give me some grace. Whenever um, two uh, countries 
have an issue and they need to communicate. They do not communicate king to king. The reason why they don't communicate king to king is because there's egos involved. There's powers at work. There's authorities at work. And if the kings come together and one king says something wrong to the next king, then militaries can get up. You see how, how uh, uh, in our present situation, uh, we are in constant prayer because we know that the president that, that leads our country right now can tweet a war. That's power. When Twitter can cause a war, that's powerful. And, and so, so we don't have the two heads, they don't come together in chat. No, 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 because royalty doesn't talk to royalty initially. So what they do is they say, listen, we need an emissary. Uh, uh, somebody with diplomatic um, who's a diplomatic representative an ambassador we need somebody who's cool under pressure who can go and speak on behalf of our nation and not be a punk about it so the guy's gonna come up and he's gonna go uh, okay listen um, now you have to understand uh, that the ambassador understands that he has the backing of an entire country behind him so he doesn't have to be scared he's gonna say uh i spoke with uh, our leader and this is what our country wants this is what we desire you can give it to us or we're going to have a problem He's going to say that to that representative. And then the representative who, who, who stands on behalf of his nation says, we don't really care about what you want. This is what we want. And so we have to compromise so that we get a little bit of what we want. You get a little bit of what you want and everybody's going to be okay. That is the way it works in the world. It does not work that way in the kingdom now it's very interesting that uh, when Jesus was alive um, on earth uh, he he was in the midst of a Roman Empire talking about a kingdom it was blasphemous and he didn't care because he was an emissary he was bold too, y'all. He said, um, I'm going way ahead, but I'm, I'll, I'll come back in a minute. He, he says to Pilate, Pilate says, are you a king? He said, my kingdom is not of this world. He said, if, this is cold-blooded statement right here. Pay attention to this. He said, oh God, Holy Ghost. I just got something straight from heaven. He said, if my kingdom of, was of this world, my servants would fight. So we know that at the time he said it, his kingdom had not yet been established. There is a difference. There is a difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Okay. And he was, when he was talking to Pilate at the time, he was saying, my kingdom, the kingdom of God, it's not here yet. So when the kingdom of God comes, <laughs> you'll know it. Okay. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. I'm going to let you read this in your own private time. I promise you, you're going to come back to, to search this out. Um, but to run you real quickly through this, in the top of Matthew chapter 11, uh, John the Baptist is tripping because he's locked down in prison. And, and he sends some people to Jesus to ask him, hey, 
Um, I just need to know, are you the one who's coming? Or should we look for another? It's quite interesting that several chapters prior, John the Baptist was baptizing people and doing his ministry and doing his thing. And he sees Jesus come up over the hill and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Then he says to Jesus, I must decrease so that you can increase. And a couple chapters later, he's saying, Are you the one? Or should we look for another? You see, because when stuff hits your life, it's real easy for you to start tripping. Easy for us to start tripping when when things hit our life and ain't nobody singing our praises anymore. And ain't nobody calling us no more. We on a lockdown. That's where John the Baptist was. John the baptizer was locked down and sent some people from prison and said, look, I just need to know, are you the one or should we look for another? And it would have been nice if Jesus had said, yes, I'm the one. Instead, he says, go back and tell John the things you see and you hear. You tell them that the blind are receiving their sight and the lame are walking and the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up and the poor have good tidings preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall find no occasion of stumbling in me. Old statement ain't it Jesus said to uh, John the Baptist look dude you were the one who was paving the way for me you told them what I was going to do and I'm doing the thing so since I'm doing the thing now you walling blessed is he who doesn't take an occasion of stumbling in me a little bit after that um, wow that's interesting very interesting like really happy because I had some stuff to share with y'all today and then this morning around like four in the morning the Lord completely flipped it and and he said he said I see the the the, the direction is is I see the direction but I'm about to shift you because there's that there's a word in the house that I need you to drop and I said okay because I was really happy I had some I had some I was spending some time with God and God had given me revelation and I was sitting there, I was like, man. And then the Lord was like, hmm, this is what I want you to tell him. So in Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. At the end of, in verse 8, they killed John the Baptist. They bring the body, the disciples get the body, they go and they tell Jesus, verse 13, uh, Jesus hears from it, goes out into a boat to a desert place apart. And when the multitudes heard thereof, they followed him on foot from the cities. He came forth, 15, when even was come, the disciples came to him and said, the place is deserted. The time is already past. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said unto them, they have no need to go away. Give ye them to eat. Jesus is trying uh, from the time his ministry started. He keeps telling them this statement. The kingdom of heaven, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand then one day he has a conversation with the the, the uh, uh sadducees and the pharisees and he says the kingdom of heaven is within you so now he gives a location and he has a problem with the disciples because the disciples are hanging around him but there's certain things they're not catching they're not catching the fact that the kingdom is located in you. Repeat after me. Say the kingdom of heaven is located within me. Say it again. The kingdom of heaven is located within me. If I want to access the kingdom... Come on, say it with me. If I want to access the kingdom, I don't have to look far. So Jesus says to them, he goes, uh, now you have to understand, um, there's 5,000 men We ain't talking women and children. So let's average it out. Let's say 15,000. Is that fair? Because they just talking about the men. They ain't talking about the women. And you know back then they had kids and kids and kids. But so they had, they had um, like 15,000 people. Jesus looks at his disciples and says, you give them to eat. Oh, the revelation that's here. I'm going back real quick to Genesis where, 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 where the Lord says to Adam, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. But I just realized, I realized when I was searching that he was talking to Adam. Adam was the side of him while he was declaring it, but he was also talking to the earth. He said, fill it, subdue it. All that, all that is wrapped in Adam in Genesis chapter 1 and then in Genesis chapter 2 students y'all know this that then God forms Adam out of the dust of the ground so in ja Genesis chapter 2 God puts flesh on purpose he puts flesh on destiny and says you can do what I just told you to do because I wrapped it in your DNA before you had to deal with your flesh before you had to deal with your dirt so even when Adam sinned because I was I was asking um, uh, Apostle Ray and I was like yo I said I just realized that that when Jesus came and he was talking about the kingdom of heaven is here I was like when did he get here Jesus didn't die for it to be here. Jesus said it was here. So when did it happen? It happened when God formed Adam. That was when the kingdom of heaven took its rulership on earth. So, so when Adam sinned, the kingdom of heaven did not lose its power. Because heaven was never connected to Adam's failure. And that's the reason why from Adam, then the people came in Babel. The Tower of Babel and said, let's build a city. A tower that can reach to heaven. And God said, we got to change this. Because if we don't change it, nothing will be impossible for them. Why? Because God knew that when he blew his godness into Adam. I when God blew his his godship, is, is that a word godship? His whatever, his his Yahwehness, his whatever you want to call it. When he when he did that, he knew. He said, I just blew my goodness in them. And based on their character, good or bad, can come from that creativity I just blew in them. Jesus fast forward gets here and he says to the disciples the people don't need to go away you give them something to eat and 
they start tripping. Do you see all these people out here? Jesus, are you looking through the natural eyes that we're looking out of? Pay attention to that. Um, because from our natural perspective, there is no way. Jesus says, well, what do you got? Pay attention, y'all. He says, what do you got? They go, we got five loaves and two fish. Jesus says, give me what you got. And give it to him. It's the, it's the lunch of a young little boy. The mother, his, mother, his parents made it for him to fulfill his hunger of a little boy. So if it's the lunch that's going to fulfill the hunger of a little boy, then you know it's not enough right there for a man. It's not enough for a woman. They made it for this little boy. Jesus takes what we, what the little boy gave him and broke it. Mind you, this is all this little boy had and he broke it. Jesus said, I, I appreciate what you gave me, but I can't use it till I break it. I can't manifest my glory in what you gave me until I break it. I need to do something different with what is your heart's desire. I need to do something different. Hallelujah. I need to do something different with what you feel is so important. You gave this to me. And in order for me to help everybody else, I got to break what you gave me. And so many of us in this room are looking at our lives and we're trying to figure out, God, all this stuff seems broken. And God says, because I got to break you, you and what you gave me so that I can help everybody else. It was you that said, God, you can use me. You were the one who said, who said, God, take my life. Yeah, God, take my life and do with it what you will. You were the one who said, here am I, Lord, send me. Don't get mad now that you gave it to me and I'm doing what you asked me to do. I have perspective that you don't have. And in order, Pastor Dave, for me to make you effective to everybody in the room, I got to break your little moment. If I break your moment, then I can make it'll make sense to everybody else. It may not make sense to you. But again, I got perspective you don't have. So, yes, you might have to be sick. I got perspective you don't have. Yes, you may be having struggles in your marriage, but I got perspective uh, that you don't have. Yes, you may want another level and you feel stuck on the level that you're in, but I know what I'm doing. I got perspective. It takes takes the fish and the loaves and he breaks it and now that it's broken he can bless it because it can't be blessed until it was changed in his hand and your stuff can't get blessed until it gets changed in his hand here you go then Jesus is done after he prayed over it and blessed it, he's done. People always make this mistake. 
They always say that Jesus fed the 5,000. No, he didn't. He gave these five loaves and two fishes to the disciples. And the disciples gave it to the people. Which meant, I'm, I'm, I'm about to shift, which meant that multiplication happened in the hands of the disciples. Not in Jesus' hands. Jesus took what they gave him, broke it, blessed it, then gave it to the disciples. And somehow, when the disciple gave it, something happened in his hand and it was still there. He gave it, but he didn't lose nothing. He gave it and the fish and the loaves were in the hands of the people, but it was also in the hands of the disciples because the kingdom is always, will always be connected to multiplication. Say that with me, multiplication. Somebody touch yourself and shout multiply because that's what you're supposed to do. So Jesus takes the loaves and the fish, he gives it to the disciples and he walks away. He's done. And then he watches the miracle multiply in the hands of the disciples because they did what he said. He said, give it to the people. Now we all see that, but we miss the transfer. Less only becomes more in the transfer. So the transfer goes from the little boy to the kingdom to the people. And once it gets, once the disciples begin to, they touch it and they give it and it multiplies and they give it and they multiplies and they give it and it multiplies and they give it and it multiplies and then it goes crazy y'all because because the disciple gives it to me then I gave it to my friend and it still multiplied <laughs> I gave it to my friend and it multiplied and they gave it to their kids and it multiplied and they gave it to their kids kids and it multiplied because when the kingdom of heaven is at work, it gets everybody. It gets everybody under that realm. Now, right now, y'all, I feel heaven in this room. I, I want to prophesy right now, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to use some discipline. I just feel like prophesying right now because it's showing sure up is right here. Hallelujah. But just wave your hands and say, multiply. Ooh. Hallelujah. Multiply. And, and, and so watch this, y'all. So Jesus, the whole time for three and a half years documented that we know of, the kingdom was at work. And the kingdom was, um, the kingdom was making water taste like wine. <laughs> it was making water taste like wine. Everybody, everybody says he turned water into wine. That's not what your Bible says. I read it. I read it. I promise I read it. The Bible says... The Bible says, fill these jars with water, take the water out, and take it to the, the, to the, to the, the big dog. Take it to the big dog. Watch this. Somehow in the reference, the guy says, the scripture says, when the leader of the feast tasted the water that had become wine, how? In the transfer. I want y'all to pay attention to that. It's going to change your life by, by the time I'm done. I promise y'all. The change happens in the transfer of obedience. The problem, sir, is that most of us want to transfer with no obedience. The reason why certain things ain't working for you is because you're trying to transfer with no obedience. The reason 
why you can't get what you've been looking for, why you can't find what you've been searching for, is because you're trying to do the transfer without obedience. And so God is saying, uh, Jesus, Jesus, watch this, y'all. Jesus never, you never find, oh, this is cold-blooded, Lord. I need you to help me with this. You, 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 you never, you see Moses stretches forth his hand and his rod over the Red Sea. Elisha has to use his body and his mantle, and sometimes he has to lay his staff. Jesus never does. Jesus is minding his business. His mom comes up to him and says, they out of wine. He goes, I got bigger things to do. I'm here for kingdom purposes. What does that God do with me? My mama is mama. She's a mom for real, ain't she? She goes, oh, whatever, Jesus. Servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. You don't hear nothing else about the mom. Jesus is hanging there and he goes, fill these vessels with water. Now, now mind you, y'all, these pots hold almost uh, um, uh, like 10 or eight, 18 gallons, 18 gallons of water. So you're looking at total, there was like 10 gallons, or, um, um, I think there was like 10 gallons or something like that. It was a total of 180 gallons that they had to pour in these uh, wa of water. There was no Kool-Aid back then. There was only water. Jesus never asked for grapes. He just poured the water in and then said, take it out. Now, back then, shame was death. Shame was death. Okay. All right. Shame was death. And so, and so the, the, the fear had to be there on the servant because he was sure enough ready to be like, here goes this water. That dude, Jesus, told me to give it to you. I ain't got nothing to do with this. I don't want to die. He did it. But in the transfer of obedience, everybody gets to enjoy the party because of the transfer of obedience. With the 5,000 men, 15,000 minimum, they got a chance to get their food because of the transfer of obedience. Now it took faith to hand five loaves and two pieces of fish to 15,000 people. It, it took faith. It took what we need now. It took a level of aggression. God said to me, he said, son, he said, I'm having a problem because everybody wants the kingdom of God and they can't deal with the kingdom of heaven. I said, that's weird. What do you mean by that? He said, everybody wants miracles and all that stuff to come from heaven. They want gold dust to fall all this other stuff but they can't deal with the power that's already inside them Matthew help me Jesus go back to Matthew chapter 11 and I'm almost done hallelujah Matthew chapter 11. Now, <laughs> mind you, I want you to remember that Jesus had, um, had just rebuked John the Baptist. Remember I told y'all the story at the top? John the Baptist is tripping, and then Jesus goes out after rebuking John the Baptist. He goes out. And he says, verse 11, truly I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not arisen a greater than John the Baptist. Yet he that is but little in the kingdom is greater than he. You ready? Say shift. shift. Say it louder. Say shift. shift. 
Watch what Jesus says. The ambassador of the kingdom. Now mind you, there's a shift. Timeline. Draw a line in the sand. Jesus says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now. We ain't talking. We are not talking years. I feel the Lord right now. We're not talking years. We're talking days. Because when you step into your purpose, it'll only take days. I'm going to say it again. When you step into your purpose, it will only take days. Jesus said, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Now, um, Jesus was hanging with the kids and he, he's hanging with the kids and the kids come up to him and he's loving on them and people were trying to get in the way and he says, suffer it to be so now. So allow it to happen. Allow it to happen. So when I read that part where it says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, I went back to it and I searched it out. And Jesus was saying, we in a war and the kingdom allows for violence because the only way you're going to get what's in the kingdom is to take it by force and immediately I realized that I was in error God would you please give this to me God would you please open this door Jesus said years ago years ago from the days of John the Baptist until now there's been a shift there's a war going on yada ya glory hallelujah there's a war going on and in this war the kingdom allows for violent people in the spirit the kingdom is not of this world the kingdom is in you it's something that you can't see but you can't access and the only way you're going to be able to get what you need from God is to take it most of us keep on walking up to heaven's gate and we got keys but we don't use them we got keys and we're looking at them we're looking at the keys and we know that God gave them to us but we will never access them and if you don't access what God gave you you can't get access to what he promised in my father's house are many rooms if it weren't so I wouldn't have told you I'm telling you that there's a hoi hallelujah there is a place in God where there's nothing there's nothing there's nothing called a locked room hold on my casa I feel the Lord right now. I'm gone. I'm gone. There is a I'm a whole shot. There is a place in God where there's no such thing as a locked door, Earlene. Here's your scripture reference. All the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yes and amen. So if you ever don't get what you want it's because there's a no attached to this that God don't want you to have it miracles right now glory to his holy name and God said listen son the kingdom is driven on declaration the kingdom gets its life the kingdom gets a bowl. The kingdom gets its life from declaration. I need y'all to start saying stuff because if y'all don't say stuff, y'all can't unlock nothing. Declaration. Oh! 
Holy Ghost. Declaration gives instruction. The earth doesn't know what to do if you don't say nothing. The kingdom of heaven allows for violence and the violent ones take it by force. Notice Jesus never said that they were out of order. Jesus said force is necessary to access the kingdom. Force is necessary to access the rest of your life. So, God said, God is saying, he said, I'm tired of a weak church that don't look like me. When Israel was fighting a certain nation, the Bible says, hailstones started falling out the sky <laughs> when Korah came up against Moses the earth opened up if you believe the Bible now if you don't believe the Bible then we ain't talking to you God saying um, I'm going to need you to be aggressive if you're going to get to the rest of your life he said to me he said Adam he said the problem is he said everybody wants that that what a friend we have in Jesus Jesus everybody wants that everything to God in prayer God but I hear I heard God um, ask me he said that is like you and your daughter and you tell Kyle she can have something and she keeps on coming back to you asking you if you can have it. At some point, you're going to say no. If I already told you it's yours. Somebody here is having, um, uh, it almost feels like hernia pains. Um, uh, it's like around this area. It's around this area. Who are you? Who are you? God's here to heal you. Hallelujah. See, this is how the kingdom works. I know you, but I didn't know that. You know I didn't know that, right? You, you, before all these people, I did not know that. If I don't, I, I can touch you, but if Jesus don't touch you, it won't get done. But because Jesus told me about you, the kingdom is here to touch you. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Mama, I need you. Oh! name I thank you I thank you <laughs> I thank you you're so sweet I thank you for your love now God touch her touch her and take the pain away and take the pain away and take the pain away in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I feel that heat on your hand, mama. In the name of Jesus. I thank you. We give you glory. 
and honor and praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so, so when, when the kingdom is accessed and the vault is open, you need to get what you need while it's open. I was asking God, I was asking God, I said, God, I said, okay, now how, how exactly do we open it? Are y'all ready for this? Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I want you to repeat after me. God, how do we open the vault? This, I'm going to say to y'all what God said to me. Who told you it was closed? Who told you it was closed? Here's a prophetic moment. Yeah, some of y'all put your hands down. Put your hands back up. I want you to close your eyes and go in the spirit. Hear that mind. Wherever, wherever you're finding or you thought that door was closed in the spirit realm, I want you to see the lock on it. I feel buildings. Yes. Hallelujah. And I want you to take your hand. I want you to take your hand in the spirit. And I know y'all are like, this sounds crazy. You can get it or you can't. This is the difference between church and power. Go in and open that vault. Turn the lock and push the door open. It was never closed. Do it in the spirit. 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 I am a prophet of God. Do it in the spirit. The transfer of obedience. Woo! I feel the Lord. Oh, I feel the Lord. Oh, I feel the Lord. Oh, my God. It was never closed. It was never closed. Woo. Woo. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. It was never closed. Jesus says, which of you, which, which of you having a son, if he asked you for bread, would you give him a serpent? I believe it was. And if he asked him for fish, would you give him a stone? It might be vice versa. I may have done it backwards. But what he's saying is, he's saying, if if you went if you if your son came to you and said he was hungry wouldn't you feed him and then he said how much more would your heavenly father so here's my question to y'all why would God ever close a door on you I mean your daddy might have done it your mama may have done it and that's what we're dealing with right now. Some of us are looking at God through earthly lenses. Some of us blame God for what our dad didn't do and what our mom didn't do. And we put that stuff on God. So when God now comes to try to change our lives, we keep on looking at him, at, at, looking at him like we looked at our dad or looking at him like we looked at our mom. And because of that, God now becomes, uh, 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 um, he becomes the problem for you to have faith because you keep on looking at your impossible situation while an impossible God stands next to you. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so, when you go up on a combination lock, the combination is designed to do two things. Please pay attention to what the Holy Ghost is about to tell you. The whole the combination lock is to do two things. It's supposed to secure what you lock behind it. And it only has access to you. While it blocks the enemy from getting access to your stuff. The difference between your access and the enemy's access is the code. If 
you have the code your stuff is protected and he can't touch it if he gets the code if he gets the code he gets your stuff Adam what's my code what's my code you don't need one if you got the one who made the lock yo I want to drop kick some of y'all if if you have the one who made the lock why need the code the bible says goes one better it goes one even better than me it goes jesus um isaiah uh prophesies and god speaks to him and he says behold i have created the the weaponsmith who creates the weapon i created the person who created the weapon i feel the lord i got that word okay okay now I, i've realized why that word. my brother uh two weeks ago uh uh chris preached a word called fail safe and 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 uh fail safe is designed fail safe is designed to when everything else fails protect your stuff the holy ghost is your fail safe he created the person who created the weapon against you so when he created the person he said okay do this 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 and this but the, the part of the weapon that's going to kill them i'm going to take it out so now you're going to shoot a weaponless weapon or, a, or or you're going to shoot a weapon that cannot kill them at that individual because because god doesn't have a problem with you being hit he just doesn't want you killed we get in trouble because we want we don't want to get hit but you got to get hit to know that the weapon can't prosper um y'all making me feel real good in here um uh uh the 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 weapon has to hit you the problem is in the in the kingdom since we got punks who don't want to get hit my 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 stupid friend he's the funniest person i know his name is courtney he used to sing this song called drop kick me jesus drop kick me jesus like a football in a field drop kick me jesus i'll do your will drop kick me jesus i'm willing to go drop kick me jesus whiter than snow yeah i will sing it until i go home i promise you but what was funny to me is we want god to change us but he can't change us unless he touches us we want god to change us but he can't change us unless he breaks us y'all gonna go home with that drive kick me jesus Oh my God. I have, I have so much that God wanted to give me and for the sake of time, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull all this in. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. Paul. One of the greatest orators, period. He knew how to break stuff down. First Corinthians chapter four, verse 20. He says, hey, listen, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk. It's a matter of power. 
and this is where I, I believe I'm going to stop um, because because we're preaching a lot of messages we are doing a lot of stuff the church has become user friendly the problem with being user friendly is it's God exempt that's a quote from Adam user friendly is God exempt we have become so oh come on oh come on to Jesus and let him love your stuff away it's not biblical you got real issues real struggles real demons that don't go away by oh heavenly father God oh no no as a matter of fact your Bible says in my name you can quietly and peacefully ask demons to leave no it doesn't it says in my name you will cast out it says you will trample on Luke says and nothing shall by any means hurt you Jesus says y'all tripping off of what I saw fly from heaven it's Luke chapter 10 verse 19 he says I beheld Satan cast down Kyle sit down I beheld Satan cast down like lightning that means y'all that your biggest weapon fell before you got here he lost mama before there was a fight and God's problem is that the the kingdom who I see that vision that's beautiful that's beautiful that the kingdom of God the kingdom has been hijacked by the hood by the hood y'all know what I mean it means that all of California is held up by the southeast it means that the whole west coast can't move because of Chula Vista what God said God said son how is what you want and what you need hijacked by somebody who already fell already lost listen y'all his eternal title is called defeated foe it's his eternal title part of that problem is because we keep on talking to him and if we're not talking to him we're talking to the situations that he is trying to push on. The, the situations that he has put in your way to try to block you see when Jesus when Jesus had to deal with Satan he kept saying this I'm paraphrasing he kept saying this to Satan get back man get in your place all three times get man get back man get in your place you can't tempt the Lord your God get in your place worship him only get in the get in your place man we don't live by bread alone we live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Hello! And that's where, glory to his holy name, that's where we get it mixed up because we keep on responding to the devil in our thoughts when we need to really get into a spot where we just only tell him what God said. Satan, you're wasting my time. I can't have this conversation with you. I'm sorry. I know, I know my kids are walling out, but they are the heritage. They are the heritage of the servants of the Lord. I know my job may not be paying me what I'm supposed to, but God promised that He, not you, not my employer, would supply all my needs according to His riches and glory. Basically, get back, dude. 
we ain't got time for this I got too much stuff to do and I ain't got time to play with you I ain't got time to play with you. The kingdom is in you. And all God has been trying to do was get that kingdom, the kingdom that is in you, out. He's trying to get the kingdom that's in you out. And when he gets the kingdom out of you it can help everybody else Adam how does God get the kingdom out of him? the same way he did with the lunch breaking he gotta break you to get it out of you so what does that tell you it tells you that you are blocking the kingdom from coming out if you realize that you are the hindrance to God using you. Stand on your feet. If you realize that you really want God to use you, even if he has to break you, stand on your feet. you're a nurse something like that right um, but I I don't even know what this is called I see you sending like you have you're going to have um, there's a business that ultimately God is going to create that's going to pull you off your job part of it is connected to sending out nurses to help other people okay um, it's kind of like um, I'm a scene prophet I'm trying to like tell you what I see I see uh, um, nurses leaving this development to go out and do services for people um, and God is going to use it kind of like as a side thing. I know you don't see, you may not see how it's going to work, but I'm not responsible for the how. I'm only responsible for the declaration. And what God is telling me is God is saying, do not get comfortable where you are. Do not. I have only put you where you are to give you connections and to give you networks. But the kingdom is going to supply your needs. You, oh my God. Yes, Lord. I see, I see money coming from doctors that work, that you work for right now. That you work for right now. They are going to need your services. And what God is going to begin, uh, what God is going to begin to do, you know a lot about healthcare, but God's about to translate you in business. Business and healthcare. Business and healthcare. Because what God is going to do, God told me he's going to make in the next two to three years, he's going to make your life easy. You know why he's going to do it? Because you asked him even when you didn't think he could. Even when you didn't think he could make it easier, you still asked him. And God said, because you asked me, I'm going to make it work. Get ready. You got to do your due diligence. Get ready to go um, uh, back to school. Get ready to get whatever you need in order to do this. It's not going to be like a, what do you call them when people go to, to go to homes to pass? No, the hospice. It's not going to be hospice. They are going to be like, it's going to be, they need services done and y'all can go to the house and do the services in the house. Does that make sense? Okay. 
um, uh, they're going to be able to be like nurses and go and check and do vitals and all that stuff and be on computers. I see computers and stuff like that where y'all can. It looks like Skype. It almost looks like healthcare Skype. Does that make sense? Because it don't make sense to me. As long as it makes sense to you. It looks like healthcare Skype where doctors can talk um, and, and get. They doing that now? Okay. Jesus knows. Um, so, so he's going to do it for you, for you. And though you may, though, though sometimes you don't think that the that healthcare prices are fair, it's going to make you rich real quick. That's what the Lord just told me to tell you. Because I don't, I agree with you. Healthcare is too expensive, but it's going to work in your favor. Somebody shout multiply. Multiply. 